Welcome back guys, this is Rob with Tech. So today I'm going to show you what I ended up doing with my little server that I bought. So I started going into virtualization with the Open Media Vault, but I was running into some performance issues using KVM, but just because I had an old laptop that didn't have the, perf the performance. So I ended up buying or getting a good deal on this system here. So it's an HP Pro D600 G5 small form factor, but it was supposed to come in with an i5 8500 but in reality i got an i5 8600t i mean it was a good thing because it actually loses uses less power uh, and it's it came with a one terabyte ssd and 32 gigs of ram so this is what i installed proxmox on so the difference between the two cpus right so the one that i had ordered it was an 80 i5 8500 and if you look at the tdp right it's it uses 65 watts and we have uh this pass mark score 9600 so this one's a little bit stronger than the one that um that got on my system so the one that was included was this i5 8600t but if you look at the tdp right it's a 35 watt or tbp down 25 watt so it's actually a 9301 uh my previous system where i had uh, open media vault it was actually a 1000 something it was so this is like a whole lot better than what I had before and and for this reason I mean because I got the CPU it actually only draws and on idle it draws 10.2 watts I mean if, if you, with those two I was running 34 watts I mean it's still very low but I'm surprised how efficient this i5 8600t processor is so I kind of got lucky with this system that I ended up getting uh, that processor because if you were to get the i5 t 8500t that one is not as strong as the 8600t so that's something to keep in mind and i i really like the the specs on this because 32 gigs of ram and and one terabyte ssd that was basically i could just put it in, into my home lab and then i could work with what it has i don't have to add more ram yet uh the storage one terabyte is fine for what it is so um maybe later on right if i start uh, putting more VMs in there or add, adding more stuff and I need more space, but then I would consider building one. But in this, like right now, this has the ability to go up to 128 gigabytes. So I think I will be fine for a while using this one. So if we look at my Proxbox, I'm running my PFSense. I ended up virtualizing PFSense, uh, my NAS, and then this is my three test machines that I had running on uh, Open Media Vault. And basically, I mean, the, the, it's, the system's handling pretty well. If you look at my CPU, my memory storage, um, for now, I mean, this, this is a, it's been working real well, but I know I had a comment of, of people were interested on in how I got, uh, uh, open media vault working on, on with Proxmox. And the thing is that, I don't know if you recall an old video of mine, uh, I'll post a, a little clip of it. Um, I used an HD dock from Sabrent and it's a USB. So the way that you have to do that, I created another account. So this one, the default account for Proxmo is root. But whenever you're using a different account, you can't assign raw devices to for the IP pass through. So the way you go about it is if you click on your data center here in the top left, you do map devices on um, resource mappings and you have to map the PCI devices, like in this case, I already mapped this device right here, which is an i340T2. Uh, make sure you don't put spaces on the name. If not, it won't let you. Now here on the bottom, this is for, this is the Sabrian HDD dock that I was saying. So you have the USB pass through. And then this is for the UPS. So once you have it set up here, we go to Nemo, which is, that's my NAS. We'll go into hardware. And you can see here that I was able to pass a mapping. So you go add and then you do like a USB device, you use map device, and then you get all your mappings here. So this is for USB devices. So in case that you don't map it, you can do the USB vendor and then ended up doing it like this. Uh, that's another way of doing it, but you need to use the root account for it to work like that. But if you're using a map device, you can just do it straight off from your second account but well, this is an administrator account also now i were to look at doing a pcie device and we go map devices 
here you have the mapping for that one. So that one's set up for my PFSense since it's a dual port. So actually the migration for Nemo, so I only went with two processors. I did have issues with one processor, didn't have enough uh, processing power to handle uh, one gig throughput for transferring files over SMB. So I added another core. Now for the RAM, initially I had done four gigabytes and it worked well, but then I decided to install the Docker Compose plugin. So I had to use, uh, I went for eight gigabytes so I could run that also. Now I do, since this is a virtualized environment now, I do have these two hard drives. Now the main one, the 32 gigabyte, that's for my OS and the 30 gigabyte, that's my Docker drive. So I installed Docker on this 30 gigabyte uh, and I'm going to install everything uh, on that drive that pertains to Docker. Now let me jump to Open Media Vault. So this is basically the same thing that I set up in my other video on the, the video that is titled uh, DIY NAS. Uh, so basically the, the, there's no easy way of migrating everything from your old Media Vault to the new Media Vault. So what I did is I took screenshots of the whole configurations. Uh, basically I went to my storage uh, and if you go to shared folders. So I took pictures of this so I, I could recreate them as soon as I, I fired this up. So the, in this case, the only thing that I'm using right now, right, the, the, the USB pass through would be this data drive, this data drive that is mounted here on SDC one. This is actually loading from the USB device. So we go to disk. You can see that I have those two, these first two ones are the one, the 30 and the 32 gigabyte. This is the ones that are provided by Proxmox. Now this two Seagate one, this is the six terabyte drives that are provided via the USB pass through. So once you get it passed through, I mean, it, the system sees them the same and I already rebooted a couple of times. And I mean, it is, it's been working, um, as far as any additional configuration, it's, uh, I do have a smart sensor data just to make sure that in case there's any unallocated sectors on uh, on the drives, I'll go ahead and get an email for it. And we go to devices. You can see this two, I'm monitoring this two, this two are my six terabyte drives that are passed via the USB. Uh, you can see the, the status. This two, since they're virtual hard drives, you're not gonna get a status on those. Now, as far as uh. The way that I configured this is that I have my main drive, which is be the SDC. Uh, this one would I have the NAS or the SMB service loading this one drive, but then I have scheduled tests on Sundays, so it, it creates a copy from this drive to the other drive. And the way that I did that is here in system, you can go to schedule tasks, and I have this rsync command, and now. I'll post it here on, on, on text so you can see the command, but it's basically rsync space dash AV space and then forward slash. Then you, you provide your absolute path for, for the hard drive. And then you specify, make sure that you have this comma, right? Not comma, this uh, forward slash here. If not, uh, it won't copy correctly. It will copy one directory before it will it'll cause issues. And then you provide the, the location that you want, which in this case, this is my other disk that I have. So once that's set up, uh, this will like, if you look at here, right, it's, uh, at 11 PM on Sundays, it will run. Um, and this is the reason I decided to do this is because initially I was going to do a RAID one, but this drives, they draw, they produce a lot of heat. So I can't have them running both at the same time. Uh, and then they're set close to me so they're the, the enterprise drives that i bought they're ki quite noisy so i spin them down now this one i called it a purge backup disk so the the thing by doing this method that i'm showing you is that you can delete files from your main drive which would be this one and you'll still have them on your secondary drive as uh, because it, whenever you sync it and and like let's say i add new files today those won't be in on the backup drive until sunday uh, but in case that you delete anything that is already on the backup drive, it won't get deleted automatically. That's why I have this purge disk. So the, what this purge disk command does is the same thing as this command, but I added the dash dash delete, and this will delete anything that does not exist on the source. 
So in case you have a test one folder and then you delete it and that's already that's on the backup drive you, and you run this purge that will automatically delete also that that folder. Um, so that's why I'll have a have it set up here. Now, any additional things that I have the workbench, I usually always do the 30 minute timeout instead of doing the five. I think it's the default. And then I do the SSL TLS connection force TLS T SSL TLS. And this is just so whenever you open the site, you, you uses encrypted site instead of using the port 80. Now, before you do that, you do need to provide it a certificate. So if you go to certificates and then you do SSL, just make sure you create and you can just create, you can do a basic one. I just did a five year cause I don't want to maybe be messing with it. Um, but you can just do the, the common names, like on mine, I named it Nemo, but you can leave the IP. You can name it well, like the name of your server. Just provide the, the county. After you do that, you'll have this, the certificate right here. After that, you can go back from, from certificate, you can back to workbench. And then here you can just go ahead and do the drop down, and you'll find it there. Now for. I already went over this file systems. I, I chose to use XFS because my, my main six terabyte drives are this ones right here. Uh, and I'm using XFS and then this SDB drive. This is the Docker, uh, drive. Uh, I decided to do XFS as well. This XT4 has the default that it installed when I installed the open media vault. So now services, I'm still running uh, Docker. I created this compose folder and I created the app data folder. Um, so that's how I ended up linking them here. So if you look at Docker, I ended up providing an absolute path. And this is just because I want this Docker installation to be running on this particular drive. And this would be the doc, the drive that I specified for Docker. You don't have to change it. I mean, um, if you leave the default path, it's just going to install. Uh, alongside your your open media vault installation but this is the reason why i changed it so it just depends where you want to put it um so the way like for this app data right and then this compose folder if you look there you have to share them under storage and then shared folders and you can see here app data and compose but if you look at and on on here I went ahead and created some folders. So I created a Docker dash data, and then I created the app data folder. And then I did the same thing, Docker dash data. And then inside that folder, I created the compose. And then I ended up just linking the app data and the compose as shared folders. And that's just so I could map it. Whenever you do services, compose settings, you can map it here, like compose and app data. And that gives you the ability to Instead of writing the whole absolute path, like I showed on other videos, you can just go ahead and use this part, change to compose data path, and it's automatically going to add it into this app data folder. So an example I can show you is on files. I do have my unified controller running. I'll go ahead and edit. And you can see how I ended up using the change to compose data path, and then you forward slash and create at the name of the containers, just so we can create a folder for, for that container. So that's what that is. But that's the only container that I'm running right now. Um, I guess that's pretty much it for my open media vault apart from SMB. So I have my data share settings. So this is the settings that I used just in case you all want to copy those on the shares. If we edit. This is what I went with. Um, I enabled the recycling BIM is a four gigabyte. So you can always go back. Like in this case, it will automatically purge every after 30 days. So what happens is that if you delete a file, you can also click on the directory on top and do a dot recycle and you'll be able to recycle those files. So that's what this is here. Now for users, I do, I created two users. So uh, I have this account, Robert, this is my main account. So I have, I added the group Docker root sudo and users. And basically every time that I'm working 
on the system that I'm not on the web GUI. Like if I SSH into the system, I always use this robber account because that's what I created and that's why I added myself into sudo and root. Now users is you need it for the shares because th that whenever you create the access for the shares, if you're not part of the users group and then your your account is not part of the owner for those, so you won't have access to to your network file. So that's why I do it like this users and Docker. Now in this app user, this is the user that I use for Docker. Um, so I give it access to Docker and I give it access to users. So in case that I need to have this account access files in the drives, it can access it based on users group. And the what I'm referring to on this is like if we go to storage and we go to shared folders, and let's click on my data and we go ahead and click access control list. You can see here that the owner is my Robert account. So I have read, write and execute. Now the users have uh, read and execute. So here, what you can do, because I just set it up, so this is wrong. So I'm going to do also read, write and execute because I want my any user that I add to the system to be able to access this. But I guess I, I missed uh, saw this setting here. So I'll just go ahead and click save. Uh, I'll check my other ones. Yeah, so I'm going to also make the same thing, read, write, and execute. And basically, this is just telling it, right, that any files, if you belong to the users group, what type of access do you want them to have? So I want them to have read, write, and execute access. App user, um, that's the owner that I left for that since it's going to be used by Docker. Uh, compose the compose uses the root as a default is it's getting the configuration from the services so that's why that's on root so i'll go ahead and just do read write and execute also now this one i'm experimenting with this directory okay this one's correct i'm experimenting with this directory because you can create a, a folder a share where every time they use your user it will create uh it, your own folder for your files but I was trying to get it working with NF, NFS, um, but I haven't had much luck. Uh, so that's what, what I was been working on. So what I was referring to on, on the permissions for root uh, on the compose, if you, if you go to settings here, you can see, right, uh, compose directory and its owner of directories and file is root. So that's why that one says root. Um, so that's the whole configurations that i have here on my open media vault if you guys have any other questions uh, please let me know i if you it's important for you to create a user though if because if you don't create a user you won't be able to access your network files and that's because this the open media vault automatically resets your password on the it's, it's, i think it's an smb password i think it's what it's called and when you create a user it automatically does it but whenever it doesn't work just make sure that the correct groups or the correct permissions are assigned on those files. Now, if you want more of a in-depth uh, tutorial, I mean, I think I covered everything, but if there's something that I missed, please let me know in the comments and I'll be more than glad to create a video to show you more on this. Um, I do apologize for my old videos. I know they, they look real grainy. Um, I think now they look they will look a lot better and, and I did get a microphone so I shouldn't get that muffled sound that I had before. Uh, but if you guys like uh, the video, please let me know. I'll drop a like, a comment, subscribe. Thank you.